Hey guys, it's Chandler with Utah Trikes, back with another tech video. Today we're gonna go over the 860C display for the Bafang motor systems. The 860 is a really easy and user-friendly display, but if you don't know how the buttons work, it can be a little tricky. So we're gonna go over all the functions of the buttons, the settings, and some of the secret functions of the buttons. With the 860C display, we typically mount them on vertical handlebars using our UT Custom Accessory Mount. If that's something you want, we'll link that down in the description below. With this display, you can mount it on a horizontal handlebar. Some of the models that have horizontal bars here. It's a little tricky because it's not quite straight on the handlebar, it's kind of at an angle. But with the vertical bars, with the UT accessory mount, it fits perfectly on that handlebar, but you can mount it as you like. All right, let's get into the 860 and some of the functions. With the 860 display, you have a separate button pad detached from the screen, which makes it really nice. You can mount this anywhere on your handlebar that's comfortable and easier for you to reach. First thing we're gonna do, you'll see there's four buttons on the button pad. You have your power button, your menu button, and then your plus and minus. So let's turn it on. You press and hold the power button until you see our Utah Trikes logo pop up. Now the display is on. Here in the main screen, you can see you have a speedometer and also a voltage or a wattage reading of how much power is coming out of the motor. So when you throttle it, you'll see the little indicator come, show you how much power it's using. You also have a digital readout of your miles per hour or kilometers, whatever you prefer. And then you have here, the one is the level of pedal assist. So you have zero, level up, so plus raises the assist, and then minus lowers the assist. And then if you're in zero, you'll have no throttle response and no pedal assist response. Also here, you'll have a couple different settings that will show some readings. So here we have the trip, and to cycle through that, you'll press the menu button once. Now you can see we have odometer and your range, and then we're back to trip. It also has a little timer here, so when you turn it on, you can see how long you've been riding. So now if you wanna reset your trip after each ride, you press and hold the plus and minus button and that'll reset all of the readings. So your time, your odometer, your trip will all be reset. So if you wanna keep track of your mileage and your time, you wanna reset that at the beginning of every ride. A couple of things that you'll notice, there's gonna be down here will be where your error code will show up. So I'm gonna throttle it and because we don't have the speed sensor hooked up, it's gonna throw an error code. So you can see the motor cut out because the speed sensor is not reading. So here we have an error code that popped up with a yellow exclamation point. Because the speed sensor wasn't connected, the motor is gonna cut out power. So when you get an error code, this is where it's gonna show up. We'll go into detail further when we have our motor diagnostic video. We'll go over all the error codes and some troubleshooting tips, but you'll have to see that in a later video. Another thing you'll see is when you pull the brakes, there's gonna be a red exclamation point up here in the corner. That's telling you that your brakes are engaged or your shift gear sensor is engaged and that's gonna cut power to the motor. So if your brakes are locked, the trike isn't gonna run away from you. So if you see that little red arrow, release the brakes, it goes away, you know it's just the brake sensor. Now you're familiar with the screen and what's on there, let's get into the settings. So you see the menu button, you'll double click that and that takes you into the settings. Now you're in the settings, to scroll through the settings, you'll use the plus and minus. The plus button will take you up, the minus button will take you down, and then to select, you'll press menu, and once it's flashing, you know you've selected it. Now you can scroll through the options to change those settings with the plus and minus button. Some of the settings that you can get to in the menu is your language, so if you wanna change it to English or Spanish, then you also have the system units, imperial or metric, then you can change the brightness of the screen, and then here we have an auto off function. So if the trike is sitting idle and you're not riding it, right now it's set to turn off after five minutes. So you can change that time or you can turn it off so it doesn't auto shut off. The next one down here is scenes analog. That's controlled by the programming software. So this isn't something that you can change, but because this display has an analog view and a digital view of the speed, there's really no need to change that. 
The next thing here is the battery indicator. This will tell you the range of your battery left. You can change it from voltage to percentage, but I always recommend keeping it in voltage because that's the most accurate way to read your battery. We do have a battery diagnostic video that I explain all of this, but I'll go over real quick with you. A fully charged battery will be 54 volts and a dead battery will be 20 or zero. So that's kind of a way you can indicate your range, but it depends on the way that you ride, how much throttle you're using and how much pedal assist you're using. So just pay attention as you're riding, you'll get a better idea of what kind of range you can get out of your battery. The next setting is your power indication. So you can change it from power or current. And then we have the clock settings. So we'll select the clock and now you can change the year, month, date, hour, minute, and second of your clock. If you run out of battery charge, the display does have a little battery, so it will save your information. But if it sits for a long time, you might have to reset this. But normal day-to-day -day riding, this should stay the same. The next setting is the start password. So you can set a password lock on the display. So you have to put a password in to turn on the display and access the menu. So here you can select that and set your password, but don't forget your password, because if you forget your password, you will have to do a factory reset. You would have to send it into us for us to be able to do that. Then we go down to these three dots here. That's just the more settings. So here you can change your wheel size, depending on what size wheel you have. Your battery voltage, this is a 48 volt system, so we're just gonna leave that at 48 volts. Then you have a USB port on and off. Your Most batteries will have a USB plug, not all of them, but if it does, in here you can turn that on or off. So if you wanna be charging your phone or something while you're riding, this is how you make sure it's on. Then you have a light sensor. The screen itself has a sensor built in, so if you're riding at night and it starts getting dark, it will automatically turn your lights on and it'll dim the screen so you can see it a little better at night. Next, we have the advanced settings. This one obviously needs a password, but the password is really easy, 1919. So you scroll down to input password, select it, and you simply press the plus for one menu, moves on to the next one, and then down. And then you just repeat that, 1919. So now that we're in here, this is where you can adjust the speed limit. We already have the speed limit set at 32 miles per hour, which is gonna be far faster than most of you riders can get to. If you are going faster than that, you'll wanna bump up the speed limit because once it reaches the speed limit, the motor is gonna cut out so that you don't go over that speed limit. But for the most part, 32 miles an hour is a good setting. You're not really gonna go faster than that, but if you do, this is where you adjust it. Next, we have the number of assist levels. You can go from three, nine, and five. So that just changes how many different pedal assist options you have. It doesn't change the amount of speed or amount of power. It basically just limits, you can have one, two, and three, or it spreads it out between nine levels of assist. So you have a little more fine tuning of how much assist you want. And then below that will be your error codes. This is where if you have any stored error codes, they're gonna pull up here. So if the code went away, you can check here and see what that code was. And then from there, you can diagnose if it's a problem or if it was just a fluke and it went away, that's where it'll be stored. And then you can scroll down exit, that'll take you out of the menu, or you can go back and it'll take you back to the settings. Next, we have the factory settings. So here you can restore the display settings back to the factory default. The last thing in the settings is your information. Let's check that out. So here you have your average speed, your max speed, your trip, your odometer, the range of the battery, and then your milliamps per hour cap. So that's kind of just some information about the battery and how much power it can store and how long you can use it. If we scroll down further, you'll have your product information. So this will tell you what hardware and software the motor is, and then the date and the serial number. And then we go back. And then we have battery information. So in the battery information, we have your voltage, your current, average current, cycle times, the capacity of the battery, the remaining capacity, and the full charge capacity in amp hours. And that's all the settings in the display. The last thing I wanna go over is the secret functions of the buttons. So here we have four buttons, and I've explained what they do, but there's a couple other things they do. 
So if you press and hold the plus button, that'll turn on your lights manually. So if you want to turn them on because the sensor is not turning them on, that's where you turn it on. Press and hold to turn it off. You press and hold the minus button, that'll give you the walk mode. So if you need to walk your trike or quad up a hill or around the corner and you don't want to ride it, you can press and hold this and the motor will give a little bit of power to help ease pushing the trike. Well guys, that sums up the 860C display. Like I said, it's really simple, and now you know all the functions and the secret functions of the buttons. You should have everything you need to know. If you still have some questions or need a little more clarification, give us a call or email. We'd love to help you out. Anything we talked about in this video, we'll put a link in the description below. Otherwise, relax, spin fast, ride trikes.